Today, we will hear statements from the honorable members for the districts of Baybird Green Bay, Torn Gant Mountains, Labrador West, Arbor, Maine, St. John Center. The honorable, the member for Green Bay, Bay, uh, Baybird Green Bay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to recognize the completion of the new Green Bay Healthcare Center on May 10th, 2021, and yes, I am thrilled. The hospital serves the entire Green Bay area, including 21 communities. This is an exciting day as a 69-year-old facility is laid to rest. This transition is a symbol of moving forward, one of positivity, and new paths to better health care for the entire Green Bay area. The new facility is 50 percent larger than the former hospital and includes the same number of inpatient beds with individual washrooms and showers. Upon entering, residents are screened as per COVID-19 regulations. Access includes regular appointments, walk-in for outpatients, and emergency department services. The former Springdale Cottage Hospital opened in November 1952, the last hospital built by the government of Newfoundland. Name changed to Green Bay Community Healthcare Centre in 1977 and was in operation until May of this year. I ask all my honourable colleagues to join me in thanking all of our healthcare workers for their continued efforts to keep all Newfoundlanders and Labradorians safe during this pandemic. We appreciate all that you do each and every day. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable the Member for Corn Gant Mountains. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today, I pay tribute to Nunasivut Health Team who delivered the COVID-19 vaccinations in Nunasivut. They graciously acknowledged their success hinged on the tremendous collaboration and support of Labrador Grenfell, Air Borealis, and the Nunatsivu communities. First in the province, painstakingly planned with logistics of transporting and storing the vaccine, nurses required to administer in five remote isolated communities, priceless and selfless commitment given from the director, nurses right on down to each volunteer. Makeshift clinics established in each community to accommodate a large number of residents. Teams flying each day to communities supported by local Nunatsibut health and social development staff. Each community requiring centers with nurses stations, reception areas, and post-vaccine waiting areas, all with COVID protocols in place. Transportation and scheduling for appointments all arranged in the dead of winter with contingency plans for weather delays. Nunatsibu community is pitching in and supporting the team. Proud moment for Nunatsibu government. First vaccination to Makovic's oldest resident, Willie Ford, delivered by public health nurse, Bethy Sampson, the granddaughter of the late Boas Gerarasi. A proud moment for NG. Air Borealis, first officer, Kyla Torarak, flying the team and the vaccine into her home community of Hopedale. A proud moment for Nunatsivut. Each community had local Inuit nurses vaccinating their own, pers their own, their own people. A proud moment for Nunatsivut. Please join me in applauding this tremendous Nunatsivut health team on their tremendous feet. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable, the member for Labrador West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I recognize Tanea Hines, originally from Labrador West, whose work is being exhibited at the rooms through the 2020 Artist and Residency Series and has a newly published book titled Workhorse. The experience of mine extraction and the life it offers to families can be hard to convey. And I think that Tanea has done an exceptional job showcasing this unique culture by telling her story through art. Workhorse showcases the sheer size of the mining operations, as well as the community and generations of, fa of families mining supported. Her father's lunch can is on display in the exhibit and underscores the human touch mining requires. It's no surprise that Tanea, like many other mining families, saw the symbolism of this lunch can, the sound of the metal lunch can and its handles it makes as it gets set down by a loved one coming off shift, telling their family they came home safe. I ask that all honorable members join me in thanking Tanea Hines for allowing everyone in this province a chance to catch a glimpse into what life is like growing up in Labrador West through her work and truly something unique and special. Thank you, everybody. The Honourable, the Member for Arbor, Maine.
thank you mr speaker community gardens have become a popular trend over the last three to four years in the district of harbor maine many community gardens have been created like in the towns of north river clark's beach cupids holyrood and harbor maine chapels cove lakeview just to name a few i would like to recognize what is happening at her majesty's penitentiary a collaboration between Memorial University faculty, students, and staff with community partners and the inmates at HMP are now offering a gardening program to the inmates. The Phoenix Garden, a name created by the inmates, reflects the idea of new beginnings, of building a fresh new life. And as an extra incentive, the inmates who complete the curriculum will receive a certificate certifying their vocational training as gardeners. Aiding in their own rehabilitation and mental health wellness, this incentive supports the concept that gardening and nature-based therapies have the potential to transform lives. I ask all honorable members to join me in recognizing the many towns in the Harbor Main District and the innovative initiative that MUN and other community partners have taken on to create a safer and healthier community for everyone. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable, the member for St. John Center. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. For 35 years, the Froud Avenue Community Center has worked to, bring, uh, to build a strong neighborhood for residents of Froud, Vimy, Vickers, Cashin, Campbell Avenues, plus St. Teresa's Court, Pond View Court, Monday Pond, and surrounding areas. The dedicated staff have helped improve the lives of residents through diverse programs, starting with the children. After school programs offer homework assistance, one-on-one -on -one tutoring, a youth to achieve program, recreational activities, STEM activities, girl and boys groups, computer experience, cooking and baking, but it's the center's scholarship program that is most impressive. Since 2006, in partnership with the Fry Family Foundation, 51 young people from the center were awarded scholarships at different values, 1,500, 2,500, and 5,000 for over $110,000 in post-secondary scholarships. Most recently, Allison Yetman, a previous scholarship winner, just, gradu just graduated with a Bachelor of Science with a major in Biology and a minor in Psychology. Allison has been accepted to Memorial University's medical program and will receive support again from the foundation to pursue her dream of becoming a doctor. All scholarship winners are eligible to apply for the Community Center Alliance Opportunity Funds for support of their continuing education. Please join me in recognizing the Froud Avenue Community Center, the Fry Family Foundation, and the achievements of the young people who pursue their dreams. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.